Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Twit Specials is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Twit Live Specials 233, recorded January 6, 2015. CES 2015 Showstoppers. This CES Twit Special is brought to you by Gazelle, the fast and simple way to sell your used gadgets. Find out what your used iPhone, iPad, and other Apple products are worth at gazelle.com. Well, folks, I'm here getting locked and loaded with all my tech, thanks to TechSling. And that can only mean one thing. It's CES 2015 Showstoppers. One of the stories from CES has been all about home automation. We want control over everything, from our doorbells to our lighting to our home appliances. Well, I'm here at the Ort booth, and I'm standing next to Radek Tadejowski. Tadejowski. Who? Okay. Uh, I'm standing next to Radek, who's going to tell us about Ort, a company you may not have heard of, but uh, is making a big splash in home automation. Radek, what is this? This is the first Bluetooth smart hub. Uh, the heart of our system, our ecosystem, which consists of smart devices like light bulbs, uh, smart sockets, beacon trackers, and smart sensors, but also wearable devices. Thanks to Bluetooth, we combined smart appliances uh, with, smart, with smart sensors and wearable devices. So we can use Jabon app and Fitbit as a trigger for a smart environment, smart home. In practice, it means that our hub can monitor your job on app or Fitbit and wake up your home for you when you're waking up. Now, there are a lot of these systems at CES, but the features that made me interested are, first of all, you can use them as standalone. There are so many systems out here that require the, the purchase of an entire network of devices in order to work. I can buy an outlet, which will, by the way, also can measure the amount of power I'm using. Exactly. And it will, it will be used standalone. Exactly. I can buy the light and use it standalone. I can buy the tracker and use it standalone. But then you get the hub, and suddenly you have the ability to network them all together and access them from the outside world. Exactly. Uh, now, tell me, where do you go from here? You've, you've got power uh, metering, you've got lighting, you've got tracking, uh, you've got a, a, a humidity slash organic temperature probe. What's next? At the moment, we are working on uh, Bluetooth controllers for gates and shutters on one hand. And on the other hand, we spent a lot of time on creating devices or, even, or rather transforming exist, existing products into smart ones, thanks to such small Bluetooth controllers. Because we believe that within the next 12 to 24 months, most of home appliances is going to be smart, is going to be connected. And thanks to Bluetooth, manufacturers can do that easily within a few months. I, and also, I love the fact that you are using Bluetooth LE and not Wi-Fi because it means I'm not going to saturate my system with a whole bunch of RF energy. Now, the big question, because again, it's a crowded environment, what are your price points and availability? At the moment, you can buy our products on Amazon, uh, on our website also. Within the next few weeks, you're going to be able to buy them in many different retailers. Um, on one hand, on the other hand, uh, we, be, we are building partnerships with telcos, with uh, energy providers. So this year or maybe next year, you will get this stuff for free from your utility provider if you sign a contract for two or three years. That's the birth of the uh, home smart grid. Now, okay, now we need to know if they want to get more information about your products, if they want to find it about the hub or the lighting or the tracker, where do they go? Ort.in. Thank you very much, Radek, and uh, we'll be looking for your products. Hopefully, we'll be testing a few on before you buy. Uh, let's go ahead and take a walk because there's plenty more at CES. At CES, there's no shortage of quadcopters and drones. We're seeing a great advance in the type of technology that goes into these craft of the air. And of course, FPV is always going to be a big popular item since it allows you to pilot the craft 
as if you're sitting in it. But what if I told you that you could get the FPV experience without a large craft, without a 450 or a 550 class? What if you could get it in a micro? I'm here with Frank Knoll from Hobbyco, who's going to tell us about the, uh, what do you call this? This is called the Proto X FPV. This is a, the FPV is obviously first person view. Um, it's made by Estes. And currently, it's distributed by Hobbyco, and you can order it online through Tower Hobbies. Uh, the street price on this is about two twenty nine. Comes as, everything as you see it right here with the batteries, chargers, and what have you. Uh, it's super easy to fly. Yeah, we were watching you fly it earlier, and uh, I mean, you're comfortable enough to fly it in a room full of people. And uh, no, well, I don't know, is it comfortable or stupid? <laughs> no, comfortable. Well, you know, that's actually one of the things that we, when we were doing uh, uh, quadcopters on one of our programs, we told people to start with a trainer, get a light one, because you're not going to destroy anything. You're not going to uh, hurt people. I think this is a really good way to get an FPV, because FPV flying is not the same as just putting a drone up in the air. Right. Well, one of the things that we're starting to do with these, uh, we have an indoor electric airplane event in Champaign that I run here at the end of the month. We're going to be doing FPV racing through obstacles and everything else, and the pilot has to turn his back to the course. So everything he's flying has to be seen on the screen. So it's going to be kind of interesting. It should be fun. Uh, there, there are some other products. We took a look at some uh, uh, the Bebop from Parrot, yeah. which is kind of the same thing. It's, it's a flyer that you could use indoors. You could also use it outdoors, and it's controlled via a, a, a tablet. What I like about yours is it uses a six-channel remote, so something that a flyer might be accustomed to, but then you add the little screen at the top so that people can actually see out of the front of the craft. And i got to say, this thing flies beautifully inside. Uh, what's it like outside? I mean, it, it seems really small. Can, can I take this outside? Oh, absolutely. It, it, it handles up to probably 10-mile-an-hour wind pretty easily. So. Well, there you have it, folks. If you want to get a trainer for FPV, if you want something that's just, well, just nice, you got to check out the, what are we calling this? This is the Proto X FPV. The Proto X FPV from Habaco. If you're a business traveler, you know the pain of having to carry all the accessories that you need. It might be things like power packs or Bluetooth speakers for conference calls. Maybe you need an extra hard drive or an access point because you're going to be in a hotel where you don't trust the public Wi-Fi. Well, you could bring all those gadgets or you could drop by Lenovo and check out the latest in stackable accessories. I'm here with Chad Kresser who's going to tell us a little bit about their new innovative way of uh, giving you the power of the stack. Chad, what is this? So these are ThinkPad stackable accessories, as you mentioned. They have magnets on all, all of the corners and feet on the bottom, allowed to easily stack into place just like that. But also, you can see there are pogo pins up on each one of these accessories. So what that does is two things. First, it, pass, it allows you to pass power up and down the stacks. One cable into this one accessory, and you can charge the whole stack making it real convenient. So think about it. If you have multiple accessories, as you said, sitting at your desk, why have them be cluttered about? So much easier if they're just stacked in one nice, neat place, one neat cable as opposed to three, four, or more. And um, that's really what where Stack's all about, is making your life easier to manage, making your accessories much more streamlined and better outlook. Well, what I like about this approach is you start with something that everybody needs, which exactly. is power. Everyone needs a power, so you've got a battery bank in there. Well, as long as you've got the battery bank, why not add the Bluetooth speaker? And as long as you're going to add the Bluetooth speaker, why not add the Wi-Fi access point? And if you've got the Wi-Fi access point, why not add the hard drive? Because then you could also have a media server. Exactly. Where else are you going to go with this? So, so this is our first, our first uh, round, shall we say. And these will be available in April. Um, that's, that's basically where we're starting from. Uh, we're always interested to see what other uh, accessories we can add to increase the value proposition to our customers. But for right now, that's what we're going to start with. I love it. If, if you want the next unit of computing, why not get the next unit of accessories? Chad, if they want to find out more about this stack, where do they go? All right. So these stacks will be available in April. And so they can go to Lenovo.com uh, to, to purchase and get more information about these accessories. There you have it. Lenovo says the future is magnetic. There are a lot of products here at CES that are all about the Internet of Things or the connected home. In fact, we've taken a look at a few of those products. But through all these tables, all of these booths, all of these halls, this is the only company that I've seen that is the connected house for those with kids. I'm standing here at the Brio booth with Jocelyn, who's going to tell us why, if you're a parent, if you've got kids, you're going to want their outlet and uh, nobody else's. Jocelyn, thank you very much for talking to us. Thanks, Robert. How are you? 
I am fine. Now tell me, uh, they, they were they were demoing this for me earlier. I cannot electrocute myself with this. So if if I've got kids and they're poking keys into my outlets, how does that work? Absolutely. So basically, we provide a level of safety, unlike your 80-year-old technology that's constantly on. The Brio is constantly off. It only provides power when it is needed. First, it recognizes that something is appropriately plugged into the device. And it still then does not shock you. If you did this at home, you would be shocked. To let you know, it only provides power when there's an appliance that needs power, and then it provides the power that is needed. So these also operate independently, and you could see that even sticking a hair clip or hairpin, you're not shocked at the outlet. So unlike other devices that can be pulled out, the Brio provides an extra level of security and safety. Now, I have to admit, uh, I, have, I have a bias here because when I was a kid, my brother did stick the family car keys into an outlet and blew the power throughout the house. And I'm pretty sure that's the way, that's why he is the way he is today. Ryan, I love you, but yeah, you're a little shocked. This this is perfect. This this makes sense that you would design something with the smarts, as long as you're, you're doing the connected home, to make sure that no one's going to injure themselves. Now, I, I know there's going to be people who go, wait a minute, this is just a GFI, right? I could buy a GFI module at, at Home Depot. Why is this not just that? Absolutely not. I mean, what this added value the Brio brings is that there's a microcontrol unit in there that recognizes between a human's resistance so that you cannot shock yourself as opposed to just a GFCI that may still have the, um, the danger of shocking you. GFCI will just make sure that hopefully you won't die. We don't provide any power and provide you with a shockproof outlet. And uh, another personal experience, uh, GFCIs are great, but if one pops, you're going to be searching through your house to find out exactly where it is. That's, that's always a lot of fun. Now, big questions, pricing availability. We are on sale currently with our website for pre-sales right now. We'll be shipping the safe unit in the spring and the smart unit in the fall, which will provide the safety for um, CO monitoring, heat and fire, and also water damage. And if they want to go find out more about your product or maybe the locations that it's available, where should they go on the internet? www.briohouse.com. Jocelyn, thank you very much for talking to us. And, and thank you for protecting the future generation of kids who won't stick their father's car keys into a light socket. Level five, I can't believe it. Basically, Padre said, hey, come over here. I want to humiliate you. Oh, look at this. Look at, look at, look at this. Oh, my word. There are five warriors. Well, he got four. No, he's going back. He's get the fifth. Oh, he, oh, he tried to get the sixth, but now they're all, now they say, now they're really. All right. Hey, it's crowded here, Padre. Hey. Oh, wow, look at this, look, oh! And he scares them, typical priest stuff. And now they're, now he's bringing them down, and then he's bringing them over to the secret door. Door number one, door, oh, there was only one door. One, two, three, four, and these guys you're just gonna throw away? Oh, what a, oh my. They've become angels with halos. I guess with Zalos because they have a Z. That is a record. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not going to play this. All right, I'm going to play this. Right. Okay. Totally. Right. This game, uh, this is new from Lenovo. It's called Total Humiliation. And the object is to spend five hours playing it and then get some sucker walking by and say, hey, Dick, this is real easy. Okay, but I'll do it. All right, so you can hold it. Okay. And you, and you can hold it. Yeah. So, yeah, you want to uh, pull back a little bit from the screen? Okay. There you go. Now, a bit more, a little, your hand a little bit back. And over. I can't even get the thing over the Okay. There we go. Now, the nice thing about this Dickie D is that this is, this is integrated into their all-in-one. This is using Intel's new real 3D camera. And uh, so it's, you're, st you're starting way up. You're, you're so going to kill these people. Now, these are, these are hoplites, and you're sending them through time, Dickie D. They, they're counting on, oh, they're, okay, going to their death. Uh, oh, pull back, pull back from the screen. There you go. 
Now, Lenovo's going to start to integrate all this technology into a lot of their designs. All of their all-in-ones and a couple of their notebooks. The idea is to give you another way to, uh, to access your information. Oh, you got you to bring them, okay, up. Oh, oh no, <laughs> Dickie D. Oh. A lot of work. I am exhausted. No, so tell me the rest about this. So this is going to be an all new computers from Lenovo? Not all new computers, but it's going to be definitely integrated into, into all of the all-in-ones. It's going to be found in some of the laptops. And it's just, it's, it's an additional input device. It's something that Intel released, and they, they, they've really been playing it up here at CES. Right, well, just anything. The fact that this now has eyes into the real world. Yeah, I mean, you, you could use something like this. It, it's detecting it, see? It, it, it sees where it is. Right, so this is a very simple use. The whole idea though is, just like uh, when you got, first got Windows and you were playing Minesweeper, or this is trying to teach you how you would use a hand visual interface. And it's not called humiliation. Uh, for you, it is, it is called humiliation, all right. Does it have another name? Uh, yes, the other name is CES 2015. Bye. If you were like me, then you grew up with things like an erector set. It was those uh, packs of metal and bolts that allowed you to create things, things that were monstrous or wonderful. Now the same company that brought us erector set is here. This is Meccano, and they've got a, well, I don't know what this is, so I'm going to talk to Mr. Patterson here, and uh, he's going to tell us what this is. Well, this is a four-foot robot. It's basically a robot construction system, so it allows children to kind of build this robot. It actually has lots of speech recognition there as well. So it has, you know, fun jokes and games and everything you can play with it. So you build a friend in the robot. And then once you've uh, built a relationship with your robot, it allows you to go on and it teaches you the program too. Well, what I liked about the original Erector set was it was when you went off script because it gave you a diagram of things you could assemble. But when you assembled things that no one ever thought of, it gave you a sense of accomplishment. I would imagine that that's the same thing that you're trying to go for here. You're giving them a framework and then you're giving them the, the tools to be able to make it do anything they want it to do. Absolutely, as you see. So this will be the model that comes straight out of the box. The instructions will show you how to build this humanoid. But if you wanted to, for example, there's a D-Rex behind you, you can take this thing apart, build a dinosaur, build a crazy construction robot, build whatever you want. That's the whole idea about Meccano. You can just take it apart and build whatever you want. Now, as for the programming, we do a lot of programming on Twit, but what I like about this is the simplicity of the programming module. You've got this power module in the middle, and basically once you've assembled the robot, you can hit record, and it will record all the motions that you give. See, um, he's, he's doing this wide arm thing, and then it will play it back whenever you want it to. So it's, it is programming, but it's programming for kids. Absolutely. Absolutely, it's like we wanted to kind of come up with three very simplistic ways to program it, and this is one very, very simple way of doing that. So it just basically records motion and your voice at the same time. So as you see, I can just basically take this like rag doll and like manipulate his arms, you know, it's move his head left or right, tilt his head up and down, move his feet forward or backwards. I can record these things and play them back as well, and I'll be able to share these with your friends as well. So that's another simplistic way you can kind of program this robot. And then finally, what you can do it's about to place like a smart device on the chest of the robot and using the forward facing camera you'll be able to stand in front of it and it'll basically mirror your actions like um, build a wireframe of your body so that as you move your arms around the robot it will follow you too. If they want to find out more about Meccano, they want to find out more about this little robot here, where should they go? Well, all the classic places. So go to spinmaster.com, meccano.com, we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're on Instagram as well. Thank you very much for talking to us and uh, thank you sir, you have a good day. That's right, at CES, we all about the robots. Before we go on, I want to take a moment to thank the sponsor for this Twit special, and that's Gazelle. Now, I know you know what Gazelle is. Gazelle is the best way to get rid of your old gadgets to make room for your new ones. Uh, now, if you're a geek, and you're a geek if you're watching Twit TV, it means that you've got a bunch of gadgets that maybe have lost their luster. Maybe you're looking at that new phone. Maybe you're looking at that new tablet, that new notebook. Well, that's what Gazelle is for. Oh, again, you could do everything yourself. You could sell it on eBay. You could put a posting on Craigslist, but why go through that hassle? Why worry about whether or not your data has been properly erased? Why worry about whether or not you're going to get paid? Why worry about all the packaging and shipping? Gazelle will do it for you. Now, here's how it works. You go to gazelle.com, and you find out how much your product is worth. Maybe it's a, an iPhone 5S, a 16 gigabyte. Maybe it's an iPad mini with retina display. All of those will give you a quote that's good. You lock that in, and then you can walk away. And consider it. 
Look around this room and see if maybe there's something else you'd rather have in your gadget treasure trove. And if there is, then you take that quote and you cash in your items. Gazelle is the best way to turn your gadgets not back into cash, but into other gadgets. So folks, here's what we want you to do. We want you to support the people who support us. We want you to tell Gazelle that, yeah, we want to see more CES because we want to see what we're going to buy next. And we want to give you an easy way to turn your gadgets back into hard-earned cash. Go to gazelle.com right now. And remember, CES is all about the Gazelle. If you know anything about technology, you've probably heard about e-ink. You know, the thing that powers readers so that you can read these wonderful displays out in the middle of the sun. Very low cost, very low power. It's an incredibly efficient way to display anything. Well, the company that made e-ink thinks that they've uh, conquered the, the reader and the band space, so they've moved on to architecture. I'm standing here with uh, Giovanni Mancini. Mancini, who's uh, going to tell us a little bit about, about, about how e-ink is moving into architecture. Giovanni, what is this behind us? Okay, what, what is behind us is a product we announced earlier today. It's called e-ink prism. What e-ink prism is, is our technology that encapsulates not only black and white, but multiple colors, so that we then take that film and actually laminate it into architecture products or design products for your home, so that you can actually create environments for uh, hotel lobbies or large uh, open environments where you can actually change the atmosphere and the aesthetics of that environment or the furniture in your home. Now, I know. I know my audience. And my audience right now is going, wait a minute. So I'm putting an e-book on my walls or on my... I, and I understand that. I understand why they might think that. But for me, the fascinating part is that you're taking an established technology, a known technology, a technology that we know works because it's been in millions of products, and you're making it available to turn a static architectural place into a dynamic area. It, it, that's exactly what we're, what we're doing. Basically, the, sa the same idea that we had with e-readers where we were able to take pigment that is, you know, usually was chosen for you on the printer, and you would print and just read once, and actually we could put it on, on paper, where you actually move it on the paper. Same idea with tiles and walls, where we can take that pigment, put it up on your wall, and move it the same way we move it for e-readers. Now, with the uh, e-readers, you basically had on or off and a slight gradation between them. What you've done now with this new technology is you've got one pigment for negative and one pigment for positive, and then you can slowly flip between the two, and you get this wonderful movement of colors. Now, tell me, I see that you've got them built into one-foot panels, so that would be perfect for tiling, but there's really no limit on where you could include this. There actually is no limit. You know, we have one foot, we chose one foot panels because that's kind of the standard uh, size for tiles in the architecture industry. But given our coating technology, we can actually put this on surfaces that don't have to be flat. They can be different shapes. As long as we can control the pigments with electronics, we can put it on any surface. Giovanni, I'm, I'm excited. I want to see this. I want to see this in my building. In fact, I want to see this at, tw at the Twit Brickhouse Studios. If they want to find out more about what you're doing with architecture, about what e-ink is doing with the next band and the next reader, where do they go? The best place to go is to our website, www.eink.com. Look at the e-ink prism uh, subpage from there. It'll give you all the information you need to know about e-ink prism. I'm Father Robert Ballas here at e-ink. Now go read your building. Still at Showstoppers, Padre's finding all the high-tech stuff. Carson, our producer, said, find something low-tech. Well, I found something low-tech. You know, on Gizwiz, we play What the Heck Is It? Now, what the heck is this? I bet you can't guess. It actually is something very useful and very, very inexpensive. So let's walk up here and tell me your name, sir. My name is David Hurwitz. <laughs> Okay, David, what is this now? This is a blue bed headset holster. Blue bed headset holster. Yeah, okay. It's a headset holster. It provides a handy home for your Bluetooth headset that's always on your body so that you can grab your headset on an instant's notice. It's always there, and you don't have to keep the headset in your ear. Oh, okay, and you don't have to dig through your backpack or you don't your. Have to dig through your backpack. And you don't have to leave that headset in your ear for a moment longer than the call. As soon as a call is done, take that headset out of the ear and put it to bed in the blue bed. Are you wearing one? I'm wearing one right now. Okay. Here's my blue bed. And when I get a call, I do the quick draw. And I the put quick it, draw? Quick draw. I put it in my ear, and I'm doing the call. And as soon as the call is done, I say, hey, great talking with you. Talk to you later. I take it out, and I put it to bed. 
Okay, it, now does it, uh, is it comes in green? It comes in. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, this one is white. That one's white. So in the, in the box, we have a box right here. In the box, there are three what we call bed covers, black, white, and green, and blue. That's actually a blue. Okay. And those are interchangeable. You can just pop those off and pop them on. Oh, I see. No, no stick them or anything. You just yeah. I'm looking back here. That's right. So that, so that you can match it up to what you're wearing for that day. Now, I, as a guy, I tend to always have the black bed cover on here. But especially for the ladies, they might want the the robin egg blue bed cover, or they might want the white bed cover. Okay. And now the final thing is the cost. 19.95. And is it out now? It's out now. It was launched today. It's available at bluebed.com. B l u b e d. Bluebed.com. Okay. So it's low tech, but it's Pretty nifty. Dick DiBartolo, the Gizwiz, at Showstoppers. This is a light bulb, but it's not any light bulb that you've seen. Uh, we know that there's a lot of home automation here at CES, but stack lighting has something that's, well, it's just a little bit different. And you know, I love the difference. I'm here with Neil Joseph from Stack, uh, stack Lighting, who's going to tell me why this is the bulb you're going to want in your house. Neil, what is this? So the difference with Alba here is we've embedded light and occupancy sensors directly into each bulb. So you don't, while we have an app, you don't have to touch the app because it understands how much natural light is in a room and whether people are in the room. So you become the switch. When you come in the room, the lights turn on. When you leave, they turn off. Now, this, this sounds a lot like what we've seen from some of the other vendors here, including Philips and, and you know, for a few others I won't call out, but, but they've got very good technologies. The one thing that fascinates me is the fact that you're not using, like, Bluetooth LE or other RF tracking systems in the bulb to detect whether or not there's someone in the room. What that means is it doesn't matter if you don't have a phone. It doesn't matter if you don't have a bracelet. It doesn't matter if you don't have another piece of technology because you are the trigger. Right, correct. We use actual um, motion and different types of occupancy sensors right inside each bulb. You can't see the sensors and light sensors. So uh, you don't have to carry your phone on you for it to understand if you entered or left a room. Uh, you've got an interesting announcement that just came out. And of course, Nest is owned by Google and you just made a partnership with Nest. What does Nest want with Stack? So Nest is uh, our first partner of several to come that we'll be announcing soon. Uh, and what we're doing with Nest is uh, we're, while we're able to flash the lights if there is uh, an alarm from your Nest Protect, with the thermostat, we're, you can set the temperature in different rooms, whether it runs warmer or cooler than where the thermostat is. And based on occupancy that our lights detect, we can help the thermostat adjust uh, you know, the temperature up or down. That's the dream of the automated house. Now, the big question, pricing, availability, and where do they go if they want to find out more about stack lighting? Uh, Alba is $60 a bulb, uh, so same as most of the other connected light bulbs. And you can go to stacklighting.com to pre-order, and we begin shipping in spring. Thank you so very much for talking to us, and uh, hey, get stacked. If you watched our footage from CES 2014, then you know that this is the LEO. The idea was to make an inexpensive car, a safe car, a car that was on the cutting edge of technology and yet could be afforded by the masses. And boy, they did it. Now, last year, we were impressed. They did manage to make a car that could come under $7,000 that was safe enough to drive on an American road and that got phenomenal gas mileage. Well, now they've one-upped it in 2015. This new version of the prototype has a much more refined interior, and they've changed the aerodynamic styling. The front wheels are now housed under cowling, which allows them to increase the fuel efficiency, and they've changed the fender to give it, well, just a meaner look. Now, beyond that, inside this cabin, I, I got to tell you, it feels like a fighter. I've got the throttle at my foot. I've got the gear shifter here. It, it, it can seat two in tandem, but the really big news is the fact that you now have the option of adding a lot of electronics. Everything from a Navi to, my personal favorite, a connected system. It's an internet connected car, which means your car can tell you when it needs maintenance. Your car can tell you what kind of driving that you've been doing. It can store all these data points, which means that your car is now part of the Internet of Things. Now, they haven't lost all the other good stuff. It is still safe. It's got three airbags. It's crash safe. It's been tested. And it still gets 84 miles per gallon on the highway and 49 miles per gallon on the, on the city. Now, it's got an eight-gallon tank, so that means that you can go, well, way longer 
than your bladder might allow. Now, this is still something that you need to pre-order, and they're going to be improving this as they go along. But I got to tell you, as a, a brand new startup car company, the Elio has come a long way, and uh, I think that's the perfect way to end CES 2015 at Showstoppers. I'm Father Robert Ballas here, the Digital Jesuit, and until next time, let's roll.